Hey everybody and welcome back to The Millennial Project. Last time we spoke with Sarah Jane Schwartz and heard why so many residents in Beechwood Canyon feel that Hollywood sign tourism is not only dangerous, but should be shut down immediately. In this next interview, you will get to meet Tony Fish, who is another major advocate for shutting down tourism in the neighborhoods that sit below the sign. Tony lives one neighborhood over from Sarah Jane in Lake Hollywood Estates, and much like Sarah Jane, Tony has become a sort of de facto representative for residents in Lake Hollywood who are just totally fed up with Hollywood sign tourism. So Tony has organized these residents into an advocacy group called the Lake Hollywood Coalition. He has petitioned the city to shut down a popular Hollywood sign viewing area known as the Scenic Vista, and he has done a ton of press promoting the coalition's message. We will hear from Tony in just a second, but before we do get started, I just wanted to say that if you like what you see today, you can stay up to date with the Millennial Project's latest videos by subscribing to the show on YouTube or liking the page on Facebook. Also, feel free to share what we're doing with your friends because the show does travel by word of mouth, so getting supportive shoutouts from viewers is always super, super helpful. All right, with all that out of the way, let's dive into this fascinating interview with Tony Fish. My name is Tony Fish. I'm a 16-year um, resident of Lake Hollywood Estates here, adjacent to the Hollywood sign. Um, I have my own business and I've operated that business for um, 25 years in strategic communications. Uh, in, in this community and adjacent communities, um, I'm proud to be a community activist and I've worked on a number of political campaigns applying what I do with public relations and social media to support and, and affect causes that I believe in. So you guys have a collective interest with the Beechwood Canyon people in the larger issue of there being all this tourist traffic, but you have this scenic vista is a specific issue in this neighborhood, correct? Yeah, it's, it's just interesting to see how things have evolved. And what the neighborhood was in the early 2000s, or when I moved here from 2000 through 2011, and it was a, an amazing neighborhood. Uh, with the sign being there, yes, there were hikers and there were people looking to access trail and to take photos. and. Yet, because it wasn't overly publicized, and of course, not having a GPS, it was just always really, it wasn't even a question of whether it was a man manageable, it was just reasonable. There was really no spot for a viewer um, to stop, park, shoot pictures, and do what they want to do uh, until 2011. So if we look at 2011, I, I want to say it was September, that all of a sudden there was a crew, and it turns out the crew was from Council member, former council member Tom Labonte's staff, his office staff, and they were out with hard hats and shovels, and they pretty much uh, graded and leveled both sides of Mulholland Highway, known as the Scenic View. The interesting thing is, from that point forward, not only did you then have two parcels that were more conducive to viewership, they literally, they meaning Labonte, uh, pretty much tore out every bit of growth that had probably been there for 20 years and bald in it. So when you drive up there, as you probably did today, you see both sides of the street totally flat with actually viewing areas and viewing rocks. And it's really now known pretty officially by companies like Google, Google as a tourist destination. And we can thank Tom LaBonge for doing that without any public hearing, without any CEQA review, without any Department of Building and Safety approval. We have documentation from Recreation and Parks and the Department of Building and Safety, and we got confirmation in Councilman Rue's office in November that indeed the vistas are Ill illegal. Well, and I think this is really interesting because, first of all, there's a ton of great information packed in there, yeah. and I really appreciate you kind of like laying it all Background. out. Background. <laughs> um, yeah, and I think it sounds like what occurred is that a group of people from the Councilman's personal office, yes, rather than Department of Parks and Recreation, right. yes. Or excuse me, Recreation and Parks. I'm, I got the TV show <laughs> in my head. Rec and uh, yeah. uh, uh, Recreation <laughs> and Parks. Parker, yeah. So it sounds to me like someone from the personal office, or excuse me, a group from the personal office, I uh, came out and basically did this work themselves, which seems weird to me because I used to work in a congressional office yeah. on what you might call like a kind of personal staff, and yeah. was never asked to do anything along those lines that would have been very it, yeah. outside the realm of, of what we would consider normal. Yeah, yeah. And so I was curious if you could kind of elaborate on, on why this all occurred. Sure. So if you look at Council Member LaBonge, who really considers himself Mr. Parks, Mr. Access, those of us that have lived up here for some time and even short-termers, 
uh, really believe that the council member tied his career to the image and perception of the Hollywood sign. So it wasn't, as he would claim, GPS, just GPS to change and increase traffic because about three times a year, once the Vista had been, uh, let's say, balded and graded, the council member did series of public announcements, press releases, PR promotion campaigns, inviting people to come up to take pictures and to hike the Hollywood sign. And we think conservatively our traffic has increased 10 times since 2011. But to get back to the scenic view, is kind of the notion for you guys as homeowners that one, the scenic view was not done legally. Two, it impacts the environment negatively. Three, that it presents just a nuisance in the neighborhood. And four, that it's actually a public safety hazard as well. Well, absolutely. I would say probably the, mo the most, clearly the most grave concern is public safety because of fire. We are a tiny residential neighborhood with 22 foot wide streets that are illegal for commercial traffic. It is massively dangerous and fire department might tell you some others you know dog and pony stories about how they can get engines up here but i've also been with the the deputy chief fire marshal john vinovich who said when he thinks about it in a traffic jam what the heck would chief vinovich do to get his engines up to the top of the hill to refill water it said it made him sick to his stomach to think of it i think about this andrew um, i sleep at night and i have a beautiful home here i work really hard to take care of this home and I've got equity in the home, and a lot of our neighbors do. There are 2,000 houses here from here to Beechwood, the bottom of Beechwood Canyon off of Franklin. So if, if a fire catches up there, and let's say a bunch of us lose our homes, you pretty much could lose everything you have. So I don't know. I, I first fear for my friends' lives and, and my family's lives, and then I have to think about you know, property value or equity because um, I'm thinking about my future like everybody should or could. Um, and it scares the heck out of me every night. So now that we kind of have all of the, the craziness laid out, I was curious if you could talk a little bit about solutions. We believe that we've shouldered the burden of traffic and chaos up here in lawlessness for four years, almost five now. So what we asked for is we asked for restoration um, of the Vista, return it to what it legally was, and we asked for fencing of the Vista because because of the smoking um, and the lawlessness, the only thing that safely could keep people away is to replant and create growth, in addition to fencing to the curb, because it's the only way to guarantee that tourists can't go and throw cigarette butts into the brush. So we've asked for things. Um, you really need a, a plan that is inclusive of opening up alternative sites, creating visitor centers, having the city take responsibility to approach Google and Garmin and Yahoo and websites that direct up here, asking them to direct people away and to remap uh, with the understanding that you would redirect that traffic to a safe place where there's infrastructure so you can have access and the assurance of public safety. So we just wanted to take care of this area. We support a lot of what the people in Beechwood and Hollywood land want because it's in our mutual best interest. And the rest of it is on Council Member Roo. Um, we're not going to get a visitor center. We're not going to get the Vista Restore. We're not going to get closures up here. We're not going to get redirection and help in other areas unless the council member steps up and delivers a plan. I wanted to ask you a little bit more about the election after Tom LeBond retired. His chosen successor was actually surprisingly not elected, and instead David Rue was elected into office. And so I've heard from people in the neighborhood and kind of read, again, a little bit about this in various articles that this was an issue in the election, and it was, and, and the, one of the reasons that Rue was elected instead of, you know, the chosen successor was because of neighborhood activism in this area. Yeah. Um, and I was curious if, A, that is true, and if, B, you can elaborate on what you guys did um, to kind of make sure that Rue was put into office in, in, in the hopes that this would get resolved? Yeah, it's, it's a great question. Yeah, Carolyn Ramsey was the former uh, chief of staff for Tom LeBonge and endorsed by Tom LeBonge and pretty much endorsed by every political city, city hall insider. Uh, we had 14 people running in the primary. David Rue uh, finished uh, second to Carolyn by 85 votes. And we... It, asked David to come actually to this location 
uh, about a week and a half after the primary had been settled because he was in the runoff and uh, probably 10 of the top activists uh, and community leaders in this, this area met here and we kind of went, went over our agenda with David and our, our ask and wants and requests and heard what he had to say. So what we did um, that evening and then what I did with just a few others throughout the rest, uh, I believe there were seven more weeks uh, until the election. Um, I worked with Councilman Rue and prepped him and did Q&A prep, I think for four of the several debates. I also, um, along with the other fit, nine or so that were here that day, we reached out and we did fundraisers and we did meet and greets for Councilman Rue, brought in other geographies and people from other areas and of course really played hard up here to recruit and bring people aboard. Um, and then I chose to, because it's part of what I do for a living, is I did a, a personalized sp a social media campaign uh, for that seven week period where I pretty much attacked Carolyn Ramsey, uh, Tom LaBonge and the, the City Insiders, and then positioned Council Member Rue as being the, the, the solution to the problem. And um, we believe of the 10% voting swing that Council Member Rue um, achieved, he started out 85 down and won by 10%. We think we had a really good influence in about 80 of the 10%. So this neighborhood and you and activists in this area have been no less an integral in getting David Rue elected. Absolutely, like. yeah. And does he continue to be, to be, I mean, I know you said that you've kind of been waiting for action to be taken, but at the same time, is he receptive? Is there access to his office? How do you feel about, about all of that? Something really uh, disturbing and disappointing happened. Um, he filled out his, his staff, and oddly enough, I stopped getting phone calls. And so did pretty much everybody else in the community that had more access to the council member. Um, we have had access to him with meetings in his office. None of us ever hears directly from him. I text him from time to time. The last time I've heard back in a response was when we had a neighborhood election and he was here. Um, but it was really odd having a personal relationship with David, working hard for him, and then feeling that you were ignored and left behind. 